<laughs> oh, isn't it great? <laughs> Welcome to my bathroom. We're having a party. Though it seems the caterer has gotten lost. I'm beginning to think he might not make it back. <laughs> but isn't this great? I mean, for so long, it's been all dressed up and nowhere to go. Well, no more, I tell you. I'm finally party planning again, and I have devised the perfect evening. The perfect guest list, the perfect spread, the perfect joie de vivre, <laughs> or should I say joie de grieve. <laughs> the atmosphere might leave something to be desired, but one does make do, doesn't one? <laughs> Especially considering all this. <laughs> Naturally, if we could, we would be hosting in the ballroom. The chandelier, the grand drapes of white, the marble floor, ooh, the tuxedos, and the polished shoes, and evening gowns, and diamonds, and the champagne, and the swirl of it all, dazzling and searing. Yes, I, that would be fun. But with the broken glass everywhere, who could dance? Not that we did much dancing in the ballroom anyway, but still. <laughs> of course, if the weather cooperated, a soiree in the garden would have been quite the welcome change of scenery. Oh, the pleasantly cool breezes stirring the trees, a burble of water, <gasps> spritzes, <laughs> the children attempting croquet and badminton. Oh, oh, you know. We almost installed a shuffleboard court adjacent to the flowing fountain. <laughs> I know, I know, but we had just spent months at sea and Jeffrey was insistent on it, though I suppose plants and decay are not the best. <laughs> what? will happen when it snows. <laughs> oh, a simple dinner party. <laughs> Seems like such an extravagance now. I pressed white linen, <laughs> chrome serving shafers, crystal candle holders, and polished silverware. Maybe just, maybe just a quartet. <laughs> Duck? No, it's too much. And it really is hard work cultivating a perfect seating chart, placing people in proximity to others that will suit them. There is nothing worse than looking across the table to see someone feigning interest in unsolicited conversation. Oh, for the life of me, I can't understand what would possess a person to consume another human being. Oh, but look, here's our guest of honor, Mr. Droopy's McFloppy Flip. Now I suggested we name you Charles after my eldest brother. Oh, he was ridiculous. Oh, I remember sneaking onto the roof of our country home with Charles, carrying a punnet of eggs, peeking over the edge of the roof and looking down oh, at the groundskeepers. And we sang to each other, short people ain't got no reason, short people ain't got no reason. Oh, and we flung the eggs down upon them. Oh, father was so coarse. But now, Mr. Flip here, you are my only family, and so you shall be the guest of honor. Shall we have a toast, Mr. Droopy Droopals? Here's to you, Mr. Droopals McFloppy Flip. Here you go. May the world not get any worse. 
at least may it stay outside. May our lives not stretch on too long, and may I not be forced to eat you. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> no. Renegade operates in the Teatro here at Zeitgeist, and so it's this small theater, and it's all about telling good stories. 